Hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue looking at the mobile applications from QNAP. Today we're going to be looking at QManager. QManager is the system overview and effective control tool for your QNAP NAS. As you can see here on screen I've got multiple NASs here listed. Uh, the application itself is completely free and available now from iOS and Android. And there are client applications as well, as well as accessing your NAS via your web browser. But this is an application that I want to review an overview for you guys about how to utilize it to control your NAS, what I like, what I dislike, and ultimately whether this tool should help you decide whether to buy a QNAP NAS. Now, you can see here from the user interface, we've got all those NASs we've connected. You can see those little blue icons there, such as on the 672N. The reason that's there is this is a NAS that I've chosen to connect via this app via the internet. And the ones that don't have it are ones that I've connected over the network. So in some cases, like you can see with the second to the top one there, that NAS is connected both via the IP and the um, QID, the QNAP um, ID system that allows you to access NASs via the internet and therefore gives me a failover as well. So I can select different means with which to access those devices. So. More than that, we can carry on looking through. We go to the settings menu here. We can see how we've got those IDs there in the background. And on top of that, we can enable a pass lock if we choose and auto logins and other kind of general setup information about our system if we so choose. We can edit the information whenever we choose to. And when we add a NAS for the first time, we can select the add NAS option and it will search our local area network for NASs. If we haven't already de-added them, they would appear here. Or you can enter your QID information here, which you then enter your remote access details for the QNAP NAS that you set up when you first set up the device. Then enter them there and you can connect your NAS remotely to, via QManager. So today we're gonna to be looking at the um, TS451D2. Uh, we're going to go with that very basic password that we set up in the setup. We can remember the password and we can log into the NAS. So as mentioned before, whenever I've talked about QNAP NAS software, it's a, it'll always seem a little bit more intimidating than that of some of the other brands. It does throw a lot of techie information at you quite early doors. Of course, this information isn't anywhere near as complex as it sounds. You can dig a little deeper, of course, but this is really just to give you some idea about available storage and general resource utilization of the system as you log in. You can immediately skip ahead from that and go into more details here. Now, before we go any further, I should highlight that there is another application, QFile, at the top left there, is the one that I would recommend for those of you that want to browse files and folder management of your NAS system. QManager is more designed as an overview and configuration and monitoring tool of your QNAP NAS. So if you've gone into QManager and you're looking to browse files, go for QFile. So there, if we have a look back on that side menu of our NAS there, we can see a lot of options. Resource Monitor, unsurprisingly, allows us to access uh, a lot of the back-end utilization of our NAS and how much of the hardware resources are being utilized. Everything from the system fans and their utilization to the individual disks inside our NAS, what uh, their utilization is, internal temperature, firmware, the works. As you go into each of these parameters, you're going to see more information. In the case of this CPU, it's the J4025, a dual-core CPU. So we have two separate CPU monitoring figures. With our memory, this arrives with 4 gig of DDR4 memory. So we can see the utilization both of the physical memory and memory swapping internally. The storage manager here will overview if we have different uh, RAID configurations and of course the store, uh, sorry, storage pools and the volumes they're on and how much space they're occupying. And it tells you how much of the storage is being utilized by different kinds of file. Bandwidth is for monitoring our network connections and this is a dual LAN NAS and as you can see the top one there has a little bit of activity and that's us accessing the NAS remotely. If we were downloading a file then that figure would change dramatically. If we go to the processes this details every action happening in the background of our NAS system and we can see where a lot of the resources are being consumed and user allows us to see which users are connected to the device um, what credentials they're using, how long they've been logged on, and more. Next, we can go to background tasks. If we're uploading, downloading, or performing certain tasks, they'll appear there. 
Next, we have the privilege settings where we can add and create new users as we see fit or change the rights of an existing user on the fly. So say we create a brand new user here, we'll call that user Alan, we'll give that user a name and we're gonna give it just the basic name, uh, word password. We enter that there. We can enter a bunch of other information if we want, but we're just gonna click the tick. We've now created our user Alan there. And at the moment, we can, we can now change their network privileges, their shares, their application privileges. We can change their profile on the fly. We can delete it. We have all manner of control that we can have over this user. At the moment, we can edit this user group here and we can add Alan to the group if we choose. So now Alan would be an admin or we can choose to create a new group. Call this group guests. And then this guests group, if we choose on the fly, if we want our new chap Alan to be in the guests group, we can either select and add group users here or go back to the overall users, click the arrow and then change their groups and what they are in and ultimately change what they're allowed to see. Now at the moment we've created a pile of shared folders on our NAS. These are the folders that can be utilized by the network or the internet as well as by DLNA multimedia um, hardware to access files and folders on the NAS. I recommend using it for Apple Time Machine backups, I recommend using it for shared drives and ultimately allows you to create folders on the NAS that can then be accessed externally but still safely. You can create new shared folders via the application on this mobile phone so you can create a new share let's call this one mobile share and again we can add lots of descriptions we can say where on the NAS it leaves we can say what it has access to and even at the bottom who has access to it or once we click tick this new folder, Mobile Share, will be added to the available shared folders. And if we see, it's available there. Now, if we head back into that Q file application I mentioned earlier, and we log into the NAS, we should see that our new folder is present and correct. Mobile Share right there. We haven't added any data to it. And that is as straightforward as it is to configure shared folders using that mobile app. Next, system services, or if we're running supported services generally for third party and data exchanges, and we can turn them on and off as we see fit. And if we want to have um, a nice on the fly control of these things, this is a great way to do it. The application center will list the applications that you've got installed on your NAS currently, as well as allow you to install other applications externally, which is really useful. You can even cover the HDMI output thanks to a hybrid desk station and even configure hybrid desk station remotely with this app, which is quite handy. And again, moment we can hold, I can hold way back to the QNAP store. We can even install third party tools and um, uh, unofficial applications as well remotely on this device. There's loads of options here and we can even action update as we see fit. We can stop apps when needed and uninstall apps as needed. Next, the system logs will tell us who has logged into devices and every action that's occurred. You can see there it has logged when we created that new shared folder, as well as access and created users. Only admins can alter these results, and even the altering of results leaves a paper trail. If you have errors, alerts, or warnings, they will all appear here. Moving down, Backup Station is if you're running um, uh, backups utilizing Hybrid Backup Sync 3 from QNAP. And if you're running a NAS to NAS backup, an R-Sync backup with a third party server, real time remote replication with a third party server or cloud service, or utilizing a USB external drive, those backups will appear here. You can't actually action backups on this tool. You will need to use the QSync tool or some of the other backup tools available on the QNAP user interface and one or two mobile apps. Download Station is luckily one of the tools that you can operate from Q Manager, but you do need to make sure that you've got the app pre-installed on your NAS. As you can see, if you don't, it will kick you out. But you can manage RSS uh, for podcast downloads, BT for torrents, keep it legal, as well as NZB and FTP, all manageable via this output without using the download station tool. But we'll save that 
with download station for another video. Last, you can look at the system tools, and these are going to be quite light compared with what we've seen before, such as mounting and unmounting external storage, creating allow download and banning certain users or seeing which users are trying to get in but you don't want them to, as well as updating your firmware, shutting the device down, restarting and locating the device, like so. You can have a beeping alarm, And then you can have it so that if you have multiple NASs in the environment, it can be identified. On top of that, you can also get the LEDs on the system to blink if you need them to. Towards the bottom, we've got the settings of the app we've already looked at, and that's really it. That is the Q Manager tool for QNAP. It's a nice, quick, responsible tool that allows you to overview your system hardware on the fly as quickly as possible. I would recommend it. I mean, again, the good points are it is for me, although not I would say completely user friendly, I would argue it is very, very informative and does give you a very good balance between information and control. Negatives might be that it would be nice to see some of the inclusions of file management rolled into this. And although it is still possible to do the file management with that separate tool in QFinder, I think a lot of users would welcome even a light file management tool factored into this resource monitoring tool. But apart from that, it's quite a handy tool indeed and perhaps maybe even a lower res access point into QUTS from the app might be welcome, but ultimately this is quite a good user interface and one that I regularly use and recommend. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, click like. It helps me understand what you guys like in these videos. If you want to learn more, do click subscribe. And of course, visit the links in the description for my overviews, guides, reviews, tips, and comparisons on NASIS in 2020 and 2021 moving forward. I'll see you next time.